We live in the most popular place in the country to live and so people like to move here. In Chapel Hill, and likely in most cities, uh, people who work for the town are invisible. The beauty of this project, to me, is to give a face and a voice to the people who allow everybody else to live here with such a great quality of life. The project is an attempt to document um, the work and the people who do the work that keeps uh, Chapel Hill humming, keeps it moving along, keeps it a good place to live began in the fall of 2015, photographing people in different departments in Chapel Hill town services. I photographed people uh, in the library, in public works, in transit, housing and community, parks and recreation, really every department. My role in the project has really been as a liaison uh, between Michael and the different parts of the town. Um, the town has lots of different departments, divisions within the department. Um, and so navigating that organization was how I saw my role in the project. Let's see, I'm sure I, yeah, oh, you keep them about the same distance from yourself? That looks good. Okay, now look right at me, a little bit more, come toward me, yeah, right about there, hold that. You know, I think some of the people that I've photographed are, are kind of curious, like this seems like a sort of odd thing to do, like why would someone want to photograph me doing my job? But I think once the project is explained and this idea of documentation and creating a record that could exist for future generations to see what work looked like in this period of the 21st century and the people who did it, I think most people appreciate the idea. I think they appreciate the fact that what the work is, what the project is trying to do is to bring favorable attention to public workers who are often underappreciated. When I would present to people, you know, Michael's idea for this is to really show the hidden work that goes into making Chapel Hill a great place. That's something that town staff can automatically buy into because that's what we do every day and we feel strongly about it. A lot of us feel really passionate about working for the town and making this town a great place to live. I really had no idea all the different things that town employees do. So yes, there's public works department, but it does a dozen different things. Even within the library, there are a dozen different things going on. I've learned a great deal about the range of public services that are delivered. After one goal of the project was to bring that kind of awareness to other people, but I've developed that awareness myself by doing this project. I've worked for the town for almost eight years and that I just didn't even know some of the places existed. Um, uh, like Michael would bring back photos of staff photographed in a spot and I I hadn't even realized some of those spots existed. Like when he went, we went to the, uh, the fire department and looking at some of the different equipment they have out there, um, going out to public works and realizing how many different divisions there are within public works from stormwater to the crews that actually do clean up no matter what the weather is. It was a little mind boggling at times. So the town operates very smoothly and one of the reasons we can have lots of discourse and debate about what the future looks like is because we're not really spending a lot of time dealing with the poor quality of garbage collection or the problems in the police department or problems in core services. And those people go about their jobs every day doing their work and many times people don't even see them. You know, something like this, you know, and however you'd be comfortable, you know, some, some version of this. I like the process of photographing people. I like the process of working with people in a given environment and especially their work environment finding a way to make a photograph that conveys something about them as an individual, but also conveys something about the environment in which they work. So I've got photographs of people on trucks, with equipment, with firefighting equipment, but I thought the other day when I was through here, maybe something that shows the fact that you all have part of your home life here, so maybe the locker room. I would ask people if there was some place in their work environment or perhaps something, uh, some object that was meaningful to them, a tool, uh, a piece of equipment, maybe something they'd brought with them from home to decorate their workspace. And then I'd try to get that in the image. What I'm looking for, uh, and often in collaboration with the person, is that aspect of their environment that says the most or says something most revealing or most interesting about them and their work. Yeah, that's good, that's good. One reason I use black and white 
is that I have the skills to control the process from the point of exposure all the way to making the final print. And for me, using those skills and going through that process is a big part of what makes the craft of photography rewarding. Another reason is that color can sometimes be a distraction in a photograph. And what I'm trying to suggest is something more universal about people's work environments and, and who they are in those environments. And I think the abstract quality of black and white brings that out more strongly so that in the photographs we see a firefighter, a librarian, a mechanic, and not a red shirt. You get your garbage picked up, your stormwater is moving out of the way. You may never need a firefighter or a police officer your whole life in Chapel Hill, but the fact that they're here doing their job helps make your life better. Your everyday quality of life is um, excellent and when you have your heart attack, we're gonna be there in a short enough amount of time, we'll save your life. It's a story of a town that works very well to deliver a wide range of public services at a very high level of quality. It's a story about people who are dedicated to the jobs they do. It's a story about people who've been tremendously cooperative in sharing uh, that look at their work lives with a wider audience, letting me in to see it, knowing that I'm kind of a conduit to a wider audience. My hope is that you know, people appreciate the workers, they'll have a stronger sense of obligation to the people who devote their lives to providing the services that make Chapel Hill work as well as it does. One of the challenges that we have um, in a place like Chapel Hill, which is actually a wonderful challenge to have, is that the expectations are set pretty high for us. Um, and, and that's a good thing. That, that challenges us every day to get better. Um, where we find some limitations are in resources. Um, so when we try to look for new opportunities uh, to be innovative, we also have to identify those resources in order to, to, uh, to pay for those investments. And so the, there have certainly been a number of areas in which we have uh, focused on um, how do we provide service delivery in a way that's different from the way we've done it in the past through new technology. Um, and sometimes the, the lack of resources can limit our ability to do that. So I think what we've tried to do uh, over the course of the past couple of years is to spend some time thinking about what our needs are long term. What are our needs from a technological standpoint? What are our needs from an infrastructure standpoint? And what are our needs from a human resources standpoint? Um, and we started working on a five-year budget strategy uh, about a year and a half ago to prepare us for the um, discussion um, of the budget for fiscal year 21. Unfortunately, COVID hit. Um, and so that's kind of put that to the side right now. So we have a long list of things that we'd like to do in the future, um, but right now we're limited in terms of resources in order to make that happen. And so um, at some point um, in the near future, we hope that we be, we'll be back in a position to have that discussion with our council and with the public about where we want to go in the future and, and what are some of those investments that we need to make in order to, to really reach our, our true potential. For, for many, many years, um, municipalities have, have always prepared for emergency situations in which they cannot conduct their business from their, um, from their buildings and facilities. Um, in most cases, you were preparing for maybe a week or two that you'd have to be um, working remotely. Obviously, that's been a, 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 something that we've had to adjust to and we've been able to, to do for many, many months now here with the town of Chapel Hill. We were concerned at first that, you know, how would we do this? How would we continue to provide um, the services that folks have come to expect from us? But um, I've been impressed by how seamless this process really has become for us and how quickly our employees who are working remotely adjusted to that. Um, they did a, a very nice job of saying, hey, listen, we've got the technology, let's figure this out, let's work together on it. And then also we were very patient with one another and understanding that this is new to everyone. And so there's gonna be some bumps in the road. Um, we accept that and um, we just try to get better each day. And I think we've done a, a really good job of uh, focusing in on areas in which we could work remotely and we've made a commitment to that. And then for the folks who offer services like uh, trash pickup and parks and recreation and policing and fire who have to be out in the field. We've done everything we think we can do up to this point to keep them safe in that environment. Not only our employees safe, but also our public safe as well. So finding that right balance between providing those services that we can provide remotely um, and then also making sure that the public and, the, and our employees are safe has, has been um, uh, paramount to us. And I think we've done a pretty good job of that.
I think the most important um, aspect of what we do, the most important thing that um, our residents should know about the services that we offer is that it doesn't happen without people, right? Um, the investment that we make in our, in, in our budget every year, 75% of our budget pays for people to provide those services. And if you don't have good employees who are dedicated to um, providing those services, those services won't be provided in the way that folks have come to expect here in Chapel Hill. And so we're very fortunate that we have a strong workforce here. We have um, employees who are committed to, to the town of Chapel Hill and take great pride in, in providing those services and working with the people of Chapel Hill to make this a, a much better place to live. I was thoroughly impressed with the, um, the dedication and the commitment that our employees had to providing those services, the great pride that they took in that, and the great pride, quite frankly, that our town council took in the services that are offered. They really do appreciate our employees, and, um, and they said as much to me as I was coming aboard. Um, so the expectations were pretty high uh, coming in that we would provide good quality services. And our folks, every single day, come to work committed to doing that. Um, and they really do feel connected to the town of, Ch town of Chapel Hill, not only this organization, but also to the community itself and the people that they serve. And so um, that, that really impressed me. Um, and you can't, you can't fake that. Um, it's something that's, that comes across as very genuine when you walk through the doors here.